For the past 10 years, the Ryan Aeronautical Company has been engaged in the research and development of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This effort reached the flight test stage in 1955 upon completion of the X-13 airplanes built as VTOL research airplanes for the U.S. Air Force. The flight test program for these airplanes was divided into four phases, each aimed at developing and proving out a specific portion of the complete VTOL mission. The first phase centered around the X-13 as a conventional aircraft. With tricycle landing gear installed, the airplane was rigorously tested in horizontal flight, proving the practicability of the basic design in this flight regime. The next stage was the investigation of vertical flight and low altitude hovering. To accomplish this in an expeditious manner, the airplane was supported vertically in a tubular framework equipped with four castered wheels. The pilot's seat was installed to rotate forward 45 degrees providing improved comfort and visibility in this attitude. After only a few flights, the pilot was able to demonstrate excellent control and maneuverability. This series of coordinated maneuvers amply demonstrates these capabilities. A number of hovering flights were conducted to develop the technique of approaching a cable and making simulated hook-ons. Even on the first attempt, the pilot had no difficulty in performing this maneuver. The next phase involved flights to investigate transitions from horizontal to vertical attitude and return. The first complete transition was accomplished on November 28, 1956. During the latter part of this phase, several flights were made to develop the techniques to be used in letdown and approach to the ground service trailer. Shown here is a complete operation of this type. The airplane makes a conventional takeoff from the runway at Edwards Air Force Base, climbs to the altitude at which transition will be initiated, and accomplishes the transition from horizontal to vertical flight. The pilot flies the airplane to the area of the ground service trailer in a descending turn and maneuvers in close proximity to the trailer, simulating the actual landing maneuver which will be accomplished in the final phase of the program. The 12 to 15 knot wind has no adverse effect on the operation. The high degree of stability and precise control shown has been characteristic throughout all phases of VTOL operation. In the final configuration is shown on the ground service trailer prior to demonstrating the first complete VTOL mission on April 11, 1957. The engine is started and the trailer raised to the vertical. After brief checks of the control system in tethered flight with the hook still locked, the pilot unlatches the hook 
supplies power and takes off. The airplane backs away. turns and makes a smooth transition to horizontal flight at low altitude. flies by at high speed a few seconds later and returns to initiate the transition to vertical flight. The ease with which the transition to and from horizontal is accomplished graphically demonstrates the efficient performance of the control systems. Once vertical, the airplane makes a gentle descending turn in the landing pattern previously established and approaches the ground service trailer. Although a landing signal officer is used on this first hook-on flight, subsequent landings have been made without any help from a signal officer. Adequate visibility is available to permit the pilot to judge his position with respect to the cable by using a pole mounted on the trailer as a reference. The airplane contacts the cable Sweep arm is actuated automatically and the airplane is hooked on. The airplane is lowered to the horizontal and the mission is completed. public demonstration at the Pentagon in July 1957, the X-13 amazed civilians and experienced military observers alike with a full cycle transitional flight. <laughs> 